Shelby Notchback Coupe, Little Red. In late 1966, a convertible, fastback and notchback Ford Mustangs were sent to Shelby American. The notchback was a red Mustang vinyl top coupe, which was nicknamed Little Red. Little Red had a new 1967 Shelby nose, spoiler and side scoops were added. Out of the three cars, it was the one that was the most modified and test raced. It also had full 67 Shelby GT500 independent rear suspension. Later, Shelby updated Little Red to match the 1968 models by adding Shelby letters across the rear deck lid. In addition, the factory 390 V8 was replaced by a 428 with Paxton supercharger, mated to a top load of four speed. Later modifications included a twin Paxton setup paired with a C6 three speed automatic. This was the only notchback coupe Mustang that had the Shelby EXP 500 name. Ford had a massive racing win, beating Ferrari first, second and third on the track at Le Mans. Carol Shelby wanted a road car to take on Ferrari and Little Red was the test mark. The Red Mustang was the experimental car to get the maximum power and traction out of Shelby Mustangs without tearing the car apart. Like most experimental cars in those days, it was driven hard and when testing was over, like most experimental cars of the era, they were crushed. Little Red was a legend, almost out of the chute. Car and driver's Charles Fox drove it. It went fast enough in October 1967 that he was chased back to his hotel by police, a story that was recounted in the magazine's April 1978 issue. In the late half of 1968, a green notchback experimental coupe nicknamed the Green Hornet, a 1968 model, took over from the crushed little red Mustang. Though at the end of the testing, the Green Hornet was kept and saved, there was still huge regret of little red being destroyed. Nearly every mechanic working for Shelby at the time talked to the legendary little red. It was broken and worn out, but it still drove like a champ. But with Mustangs freely available and tensions put on the bodywork and chassis, the car would never be sold. It was sent to the crusher and that was the end. Or was it? Decades later, a photo appeared on the internet. A photo from the 1970s. A young kid sporting a baseball hat in front of a red notchback Mustang. On the front wing was the XP500. Shelby never made any production GT500 notchback coupes. It was only fastbacks and convertibles. The only red notchback ever made was Little Red. The car in the photo looked very tired, dented daily driver. Could this be Little Red, the Ferrari beater? But how did it survive when even the people from Ford and Shelby witnessed it being crushed? The car somehow got mixed into the Ford inventory. The Shelby serial numbers showed the car was gone, but what happened was when Ford made the Mustang, it stayed on the books with the Ford VIN number. The Shelby one was never allocated, which meant the car doesn't exist as a Shelby. Little Red was returned to Ford and somehow sent out with the other demonstrator cars and it was quickly sold. The new owner asking the salesman what does the XP on the wing mean as it should be GT. The salesman said it was something from the Ford which meant experimental. The new owner was over the moon with his Mustang. After serving in Vietnam he was looking for that car you always dream of. It was used daily and it was fast. The car blew its radiator and was parked up untouched or driven again. Over the years, the front end was stolen, including the engine, badges and any bits worth taking. The car sat in the desert for decades, in a junkyard. Its life, now over. Meanwhile, the hunt was on, after the photo of Little Red circulating on the internet. Private investigators were sent in to find any evidence of the car. They soon worked out that Shelby's VIN number was useless, so the Ford one was used. The owner was contacted, do you still have a red Mustang? The response was silent for a moment, then the reply, yes I do. The car was sitting in the desert missing the front end. When the owner was told the history of the car, he became upset that he never looked after it. Craig Jackson, who found the car, quickly worked out a sale. It was shown on the classic circuits before being fully restored. Little Red is fully restored today and the car is priceless. It's a point in history where Carol Shelby 
worked his magic to make Ford a genuine rival against Ferrari on the road and on the track. The amount of times this car should have met its end is a testament to how lucky Little Red actually is. The Porsche Mickey Mouse. A one-off prototype was the 1956 super light design utilizing one of the spare 550 frames, 550-098, called Mickey Mouse, which, with Richard von Frankenberg at the wheel, was reduced to a melted wreck that same year in a spectacular crash at the Avis racetrack. Known as Type 645, it was the beginnings of the new Type 718 Porsche with a short wheelbase and a unique suspension. The very small frontal area, along with the surface oil cooler and the welded magnesium body skin used for the first time, made it particularly aerodynamic. The Ava circuit, with its bank north curved track, paved with dark red stones, was wrought with danger, even for experienced drivers. On the 16th of September 1956, Von Frankenberg, in his modified race number 9, Type 645 Spider, led Spider number 8, driven by Von Trips, by some 30 yards, both running above the white line. The spider came too fast in the north curve, then veered to the right unexpectedly towards the lip of the banking, shot vertically into the air and spun several times. Von Frankenberg was thrown clear of the cockpit in mid-air and his full to imminent death was broken by acacia bushes, which grew at the rear of the banking. The car was not so lucky, which crash landed between a Mercedes 300 SL and another car in the pits below and burst into flames of poisonous white magnesium. Von Trips went on to take the line honours in the race while Von Frankenberg escaped with minor injuries to race another day. All but forgotten, the Porsche Mickey Mouse, a one-off, led the way for more Porsche victories with the new 718. Unicorn Ferrari. Any normal Ferrari 365 GTB4 in a similar condition to this one would be worth no more than 500,000 in today's market. This 1969 example, due to be auctioned off next month, is expected to sell for up to three times that. This 1969 example sold recently for £2.2 .2 million. So why so expensive? It's because this is a unique car, one of one made that's been hidden away in Japan for 40 years with Ferrari enthusiasts unable to trace it and questioning its very existence. Ferrari built over 1,200 versions of the 365 GTB4 Daytona between 1969 and 1973. That means despite being as much as 48 years old, there are a few around for those with deep enough pockets to afford them. Hugely desirable and popular among collectors, you'd have to set aside around half a million pounds if you wanted to invest in a decent one today. But this one is far from pristine. Despite that, being sold for 2.2 .2 million pound, it's because no other 365 GTB4 has ever been made like this. This is the only aluminium bodied version of a GTB4 Daytona to be produced by the iconic Italian mark. Five lightweight alloy razors were created for the track for the 24 hours of Daytona event. But this is the only one they produced that you can drive on the road with a registration plate, indicators, and normal seat belts affixed. What makes it more collectible is the enthusiasts believed it had been lost forever. After being shipped to Japan in 1971, it has not been spoken of for 40 years. The most recent of four Japanese owners, Makoto Takai, purchased the unique 365 GTB4 in 1979 and locked it away in a garage for the best part of half a century. The fabled car was only known to still survive by a select few collectors. They were unaware that a special and important car, as this one was still in one piece. Several attempts were reportedly made to buy it, but to no avail. Being extraordinary, and in a barn fine state, it didn't deter any of the buyers and 40 years of inactivity should mean a fairly preserved powertrain 
It has matching chassis and engine numbers, and it is a one-of-a-kind model. It has undergone a number of minor cosmetic modifications during its Japanese registration, but the originality and condition of the interior is said to be remarkably authentic and in very good condition. We have to say, it's hard to tell. I mean, looking at the pictures. The mileometer on the car has it just over 22,000 miles, which is not disputed. There are many Ferraris out there, but who can say they've got a unicorn Ferrari? One of one that's only ever been made.